Next up in our introduction of the inverse functions, we have cosine inverse. We're going to again develop cosine inverse from its original, which is y equals cosine of x. And we are going to take this thing here, flip it over the line y equals x, and see what we can find for the domain and range on our inverse function. Uh, again, here we are going to just have a square grid. As you might notice, we've got the grid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And again, that means that the period stops and starts at 0 going up to just slightly over 6, which is about 6.28, which is 2 pi. And then in the middle, right a little bit above 3, we have pi, and it continues on from there, the pattern keeps going. So we're going to make note of that fact and then use the same method as last time to flip the graph, limit its domain, and then or limit the graph, uh, cut off some of it, and then figure out what the domain and range actually are in this case. So here is the line with it. And like last time, I have an overlay for it to indicate the inverse. So I'm going to flip this over the line y equals x and hopefully you will uh, see with me that this does actually look like a, uh, an inverse of what we started with. So about like that. I think that's right. And we're going to limit the domain kind of like we did last time. Now this one does look a little bit different and I would recommend still that you start at zero and go up just to see how much of the line we have above. Then we'll see how much of the line that we have below. So we start at zero and we go up. We trace up. It's all fine until we get to the turnaround point which is right about here. So on the top I'm going to take and just erase up to the point where it starts to flip around right there. Alright, now on the bottom I start going on the bottom and you'll notice, you might notice right away that it starts to violate the, the vertical line test. And so there's actually nothing below zero that can stay in this case. We just have to get rid of it all the way up to the axis. And like before, what this does is it creates a couple of endpoints. We started right here at zero and then we go right up to this point ultimately. Now we last time also looked at where these points reflected from in the original. This is the graph of cosine inverse hopefully. And if it's an inverse it means that it came from the original points in our sine graph. So if I've got this point right here flipped over to this point. Now that point's actually kind of easy to, to figure out. That's just 0, 1. So that's a, a convenient spot for us in this case. That point's 0, 1. Now this point up here, that one flipped from all the way over down here from this minimum point. And if you'll remember the fact that the, the period goes from here to here, and that means that this is 2 pi, we're halfway in, in the middle of that period. So this is going to be going over by pi, and then we're down at negative 1 for the uh, for the other part of that point. So like we did also in the last example, in order to get the, the points on the red line, we're using these black points to just flip them around according to our algebraic interpretation of, uh, of inverses. And so this one flips over to here, making this point negative 1 pi. 0, 1 flips over to this point, which is 1, 0. And that gives us our endpoints for the cosine inverse. And that's very helpful, again, to establish uh, what we have for the domain and range, which we'll need to use when we're talking about application problems. So uh, I'm going to go to another picture that I have drawn for this so you can see what those domains and ranges are. But note that the x values go from negative 1 to positive one. Well, we'll put that right here as we're on this right now. The domain of the red stuff goes from negative one to positive one, and those are square brackets because it is a hard stop at each one of those. Those are 
uh, end points that are really going to stop quickly. Then as far as the range goes, we go from lowest y value to highest y value, so the range in this case is going to be 0 all the way up to pi. And this is our cosine inverse, so I'll put it up here with a little bit, uh, a little bit neater look to it to finish off this one. Uh, we've got the cosine inverse with a domain and a range. Domain, negative 1 to 1, range 0 to pi, and we got that again from flipping it over from the original cosine graph. We've got one more left after this, but hopefully that gives you an idea of where we get the domain and range for cosine inverse.